Um, I already did uh, a video or a few videos even on um, corrupt JPEG files with uh, the symptom being Windows Photo Viewer can't open this picture. The file appears to be damaged, corrupted or is too large. And the other uh, that's the old Windows Photo Viewer that uh, will give you that message. It always takes a little while for this uh, for Windows Photos to open. It looks like we don't support this file format. That's what uh, Windows Photos will tell you. Now, the uh, thing with these files is that the uh, tools are trying to interpret the header and they basically fail doing so. Um, now, this can mean a couple of things. This is the uh, structure of a JPEG photo. It's a chain of markers which the uh, photo viewer needs to interpret in order to decode this compressed and encoded data. So what it will do, it will first open the file and look for the magic bytes FFD8. If it doesn't find those, it will say, okay, this is not a uh, valid image file. It will give you the error too large, corrupted or whatever. And then from this marker, it can derive the size of the marker. And from that, it can determine where the next marker is. And so same for this marker, same for this marker, same for this marker. So it will walk this chain of markers until it reaches the uh, encoded and actual image data. This is the FFDA uh, marker, uh, start of scan marker. Now, this is the only marker that does not define a size. So the decoder or your image viewer will just decode this until it reaches the end of image marker which is in hex ffd9 so your photo viewer not being able to open a file can mean the damage is limited to this what i will refer to as the header portion of the file and this is just a couple of hundred kilobytes can be slightly larger if a uh, larger thumbnail is included in the in here so and this is damage limited to this header area is what my previous videos um, addressed and basically the idea is if you um, take a picture shot with the same camera or, de or device a phone or whatever you took the photo with and you get the healthy header of an in-text file and you just uh, replace the corrupt header with that uh, intact header, then the photo viewer will be able to decode the image data again because that's the way it works. A, a, a camera uh, doesn't come up with an entirely new header each time it uh, takes a photo. It has a, a standard which it follows to create a photograph. Um, this is not entirely true because uh, some markers will be slightly different maybe because you change the quality setting as a, of a photo so this is why i always urge people to get a photo from the same device with uh, settings matching as closely as possible as the corrupt file now what jpeg repair does is um, in the corrupt file, it tries to find this FFDA marker because then it has a clear defined spot where the 
actual image data starts. So it just can cut off the corrupt marker and merge or glue on the intact header. And so this is what the previous videos assumed, that a FFDA marker could be found. So the entire actual image data is present. It is of course possible that uh, damage extends into the actual image data. And this is where the error message in JPEG repair originates that it cannot find a uh, SOS marker, the start of scan marker. So in this video I want to show you the uh, a normal, say, say the normal situation where it's just damage in, in the uh, contained within the header. But I will also show uh, how you can attempt to repair an image where this damage extends into the compressed image data. You will not get a 100% quality picture, but you, you can with some uh, effort get a good picture. And the other thing I want to show, because if you open a corrupt raw file, it will give you uh, those exact same error messages. If you open, for example, a Canon raw file, and the uh, photo viewer cannot decode the, uh, cannot interpret the header because it's corrupt, then it will also tell you uh, it's too large or uh, uh, corrupt or uh, unsupported file type or whatever it uh, comes up with. Now, JPEG repair cannot uh, transplant, he transplant headers for uh, raw photos, but it can extract uh, a full resolution JPEG. So that's what I'll show as well. So this video tries to be as complete as possible with regards to um, those messages I uh, just mentioned. So. When this photo viewer can't open this picture because the file appears to be damaged, corrupted, or is too large. Or it looks like we don't support this file format. Okay. Um, so, okay, I, I, I may come back to this. Um, this picture because it may help us, it may help me explain what we're looking at. So the first thing I will do is uh, use JPEG repair to repair a corrupt JPEG. And uh, in, the, in these JPEGs the damage is limited to within this uh, header. So from this point on, everything is intact. And like I said, you need a reference file. So a file uh, shot with the same uh, device and then also with settings uh, matching as closely as possible. Pick the uh, repair tool. And then where are we anyway? JPEG really is too large. And then you browse to the folder containing the uh, corrupt files. You select them. It will then ask for the intact reference file. We select that. And we click repair. Done. So, again, what it did was, this was corrupt, it removes this, it removes everything above this FFDA marker, in this case it could find it, it will take this from an intact file and glue that onto the corrupt file. So that's the, the simplest case. Uh, with a uh, corrupt JPEG. So, 
Um, next example. Um, a common comment under the uh, previous videos where I explain uh, this um, this uh, Windows Photo Viewer can't open this picture because damaged, corrupted, or too large. Is that people um, saying, "Okay, I did watch you uh, demonstrate it in your video, but I get a message where JPEG Repair tells me." Um, no SOS marker found. So what we'll do is I have some other example files. I will first try to repair them using that method we just used. Um, these are the corrupt files. I select the corrupt files. I select two of them. Click OK. It asks for the reference file. I give it the reference file. So, now one of the pictures it manages to uh, actually repair a uh, tiny line of MCUs. And the other one says, uh, gives the, that familiar error message, no SOS detected. Now, when you get the message, no SOS detected. Uh, what we also see is that it says the entropy for this file is 7.97. .97. Now, this is what you can expect for a JPEG file. Uh, an entropy of 7.97 doesn't, uh, by definition, mean that it is JPEG data, but it says it could be JPEG data. So it's worth an effort. If it would say 1.20, or if it would say uh, 0, uh, dot zero zero, then this basically means there is no JPEG data inside that file. So it will never find this uh, start of scan marker. And since it uh, contains no JPEG data, it's no use trying to repair it. Nothing can repair it and no one can repair it. For a JPEG file, uh, for, for you to be able to repair a JPEG file, it, needs to contain JPEG data. You cannot just uh, poof that data into existence out of thin air. So this is very important. No SOS detected is one thing. It tells us uh, the uh, damage is uh, not limited to just the header. But uh, seeing this 7.97 bits per byte entropy means it could be JPEG data. Now, these pictures were uh, recovered from a corrupt memory card. And it's a very common thing, unfortunately, that uh, undelete or file recovery software recovers corrupt files. Uh, basically what happens it uh, most software scans for pointers to files so there's like this say a table in the file system where it says uh, jpeg file this is here and jpeg file that is there and if this uh, table is corrupt or pointing to uh, arbitrary data and arbitrary position on this memory card, the recovery software will just copy the data it finds on this location and puts it in a file with a JPEG, a JPEG extension. And this is a corrupt JPEG file. Um, what else can I say? So the entropy looks right, which is 
good, especially knowing it, uh, the file was recorded from a memory card containing JPEGs. I mean, uh, you could also get this kind of entropy with a zip file. So if you would be scanning a hard drive, recovering JPEGs from a hard drive, and those uh, come out corrupt, then this 7.97 bits per byte entropy has less value because there are many more compressed because basically it means it's compressed data. There are many more compressed file formats that could result in this kind of entropy. Um, so then we need an alternative method to repair this file. And um, and uh, JPEG repair uh, offers an alternative method. Now, where we could um, batch process uh, files where the uh, damage is limited to the header, we cannot batch process this. We have to do this file by file. What we will basically tell JPEG Repair to do is uh, assume this portion is not there. We'll tell it, okay, we'll give you a healthy file there you can take this portion from and then glue that onto whatever we give you and we hope and we expect this to be JPEG data seeing the uh, entropy we had. We use the patch mode for this uh, uh, select your corrupted file, the file you want to repair. I'm not, I, 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 I repaired these for a customer and he agreed uh, that I could use them for a video, those files, but it's been a while, so I don't even know how successful this will be. Now, what we, we want to tell a JPEG repair is to append a header to whatever data we give it. And because we enable this option, append header, we click OK, it will ask us for the reference file. We give it the same reference file as we, we only have one reference file. And now we click repair. OK. So it um, it's doing its thing. Now this is interesting to see, and it illustrates what you often get uh, uh, with corrupt files recovered from a memory card. Uh, this portion of the file is headerless JPEG data, which can now be decoded because we glued a header onto it. This portion of the file is part of a uh, of another JPEG. So basically these JPEGs are stored on a memory card. You have this row of JPEGs and the recovery software uh, recovered a portion of headerless JPEG data and a portion of a of the next JPEG file and it basically just stuffed that into one file and it uh, gave it the JPEG JPEG extension okay so now the next step would be to uh, try to uh, make this uh, look a bit more uh, presentable and this should uh, do using this byte editor it, it, this is basically a byte editor it, it only does it, it doesn't show you the bytes it shows you the interpreted data uh, after uh, decoding the data with a JPEG header which we gave it 
Now, apart from the JPEG header, it also includes a little bit of JPEG data. You see, if you, if you look closely, you can see here up to this point. That's JPEG data from the reference file. Now, what we want to do is we want to get this portion, uh, which is the left boundary of the picture we wanted, of the image, the left boundary of the image, we want to be that at the left boundary of the picture. And we do that by selecting a point, which is a bit arbitrary, uh, and then remove bytes and I will show you. We're, re re we're removing actual bytes and the and JPEG repair shows us the effect of that. see if I can make it look a little nicer. Yeah, this looks better. The color looks better. Okay, I'm fine with this. And so, but now I have this I, I have uh, shifted this image to far so I will add a couple of bytes again to shift it back and like I said you will not get a 100% picture but you can get a very decent picture and if you have to choose between nothing and a decent picture uh, one less This is freaking annoying. I'll settle for this for now, because otherwise this video will take uh, three hours. So what did I do? I picked a point, arbitrary I said, but I, 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 I picked it relatively close to the start of the file. I removed bytes until the color looked better and then I add bytes, zero bytes, stuff bytes to shift it in the right position. Now this is part of another file, we can get rid of it by uh, by telling the header, okay, we don't need that part. You can also just paste this into a uh, photo editor and then, uh, how do you call that? Crop it. Crop, 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 crop. Something like this. This is the uh, copy to clipboard thing, it's on the clipboard now, I can say paste into a new image and now we can cut off any unwanted parts, we can even see if auto level, ah oh, this looks nice. So, 
Uh, we still need to crop a little more, like so. So this is how you can uh, repair a picture with a corrupt header and uh, a partially corrupt image data. So initially this picture will give you the message uh, no SOS detected in JPEG repair when you try to repair it. Uh, but uh, with a good entropy, basically it will tell you in green if it thinks that the entropy is okay and in red if the entropy is uh, 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 not JPEG-like. You can also click this uh, one time. And then uh, very often I get images uh, where people say, okay, uh, no SOS detected. And then when I actually open the file, it's filled with zeros. So you could easily spot that here by a zero dot zero zero entropy. And if you then uh, watch in hex, this will be entirely zeros or a repeating byte pattern, F, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, this is what it is. This is, um, uh, so this is, uh, header damage extending into the actual image data, uh, which results in uh, no SOS detected in JPEG repair, but with good entropy, you can often still repair the image if you have a valid reference file. Okay, and then the next thing I'll show you is that um, what you can do for raw files using JPEG repair. And then uh, raw files, raw files. Um, now the um, this what I showed you uh, is the general structure or is the layout of a JPEG file. Now uh, JPEG is one specification, so each JPEG will at least have these uh, markers. It can even have additional markers, but that's not important right now. Um, raw photos are basically, um, th there is not one raw photo format. Each camera manufacturer comes up with, it, with his own format. So it's, uh, more difficult to come up with a uh, solution or a tool that can uh, uh, do the same thing for a raw file as that uh, as a JPEG repair can do for a JPEG file. For each raw photo format you would uh, need to write uh, separate routines uh, to determine uh, what's inside a header, uh, where, where it ends and where the uh, image, the actual image data within the file is located, etc, etc. So repairing a raw file is more complex and the software you find online that uh, claims to be able to uh, repair raw files like uh, Stellar repair for photo it, it does not actually repair the raw file uh, what it does is it um, exploits the fact that uh, raw photos often embed a jpeg which uh, allows uh, image explorers and, 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 and file explorers to quickly show a preview of that file without having 
uh, to decode the entire raw image data. Um, so what Stellar Repair for Photos does is it will try to just grab that JPEG preview from the raw photo. Now, uh, Stellar uh, for photos, Stellar Repair for Photos often um, uh, pulls out the uh, thumbnail rather than the uh, full-size preview. And I recently tested, um, what's it called again? What's it called again? I recently tested and I did a video on that as well. Um, hmm. Oh, I didn't do a, a blog post on that. But I made a video of uh, uh, Kernel. They also have a tool that repairs uh, uh, similar to the Stellar tool. And it didn't, I, I couldn't get it to extract any JPEGs out of uh, Corrupt Raw Photos or even Intact Raw Photos. Although their website uh, says this should be possible. But back to Raw Files. So it's, I, I do not know of any tools that can uh, repair uh, corrupt raw photos. I can sometimes do it uh, using a um, hex editor. It's, 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 um, I, I, I have not auto automated it. Uh, it's also more complex to automate it. And um, so the best thing I guess with corrupt raw photos is getting the full resolution JPEG from it. Now a corrupt raw photo will give similar messages when, as, as with JPEGs. It looks what, like we don't support this file format. I don't even know if the old photo viewer can open it at all. Um, well, it doesn't even list it as an option, but I assume uh, you will get a similar thing like uh, too large, not supported, or whatever. Uh, so the be next best thing is um, get the full resolution JPEG. So this is the third case where you can use JPEG repair to do this to uh, resolve this uh, too large to corrupt not supported and whatever and the tool to use is extract uh, jpeg because that's what it really does and we're at too large raw um, And this is even simpler than the previous two uh, uh, repairs. Um, the only thing you basically have to consider is that um, there are uh, raw photo. I've, for example, seen uh, Nikon raw files. Nikon, Nikon, N-E-F, dot N-E-F files. And they even embedded three complete JPEGs. One tiny little thumbnail, like 160 times 120 pixels. One medium-sized preview, uh, around um, uh, one megapixels and a full-sized uh, preview in, in, the, in the case of, of this camera that was close to uh, 
8,000 times pff, whatever, 6,000 pixels. So really a full resolution uh, JPEG. Now, what you need to tell uh, JPEG Repair is the minimum amount of megapixels you want. So in order to skip the tiny thumbnail, the minimum resolution would have to be 640 times 480. To skip the medium sized preview, the minimum resolution you pick here would have to be 1600 times 1200 pixels. And to be on the safe side, in, in general, I always uh, pick like 3 megapixels. And so this is to avoid, uh, to, to tell JPEG Repair to skip the smaller JPEGs that may be inside the raw file. So this is the only thing you have to consider. And then for the rest you just select the raw files and you click Repair. So this is the third type of situation where you get uh, messages like um, it won't do it for uh, where you get messages like Windows Photo Viewer can't open the picture because it appears to be damaged, corrupted, or is too large, or it looks like we don't support this format if you're using the. Uh, and now we'll sort this by uh, type. So you can see the JPEGs extracted from the uh, raw files. This is the resolution. And of course uh, JPEG Repair shows the resolution as well. So that, that, that's basically every type of situation where you get this uh, too large, corrupt, not supported error message that you could address with uh, JPEG repair. And uh, when you, uh, this, this entropy value is always a good guideline to see if there's actually JPEG data or any data within a corrupt file. Like I said before, with 0.00, .00 uh, bits per byte entropy in JPEGs, that happens plenty of times in corrupt raw photos I get uh, submitted uh, as well. Uh, people uh, shoot a, uh, a day of photos, they see the previews in the um, on-screen uh, display, and then they come home, they uh, put in their memory card into their PC or uh, Mac and they discover half their pic pictures cannot be opened or is corrupt. And um, as often as this happens with JPEG files, it happens with RAW files too. So you, if you use this extract uh, JPEG feature to recover uh, embedded JPEGs from corrupt RAW files and you see an entropy of 0.00, .00. it basically means your entire RAW file is empty, it does not contain any data. Unfortunately this happens a lot and the most common cause is uh, fake uh, memory cards. So you buy a uh, uh, memory card of uh, 64 gigabytes and uh, you start shooting and then uh, when you get home the first half of the images looks okay and the second half is corrupt. You load it into JPEG Repair and you discover entropy for those corrupt files is 0.00. .00. It means the image files, your photos have been written to non-existent memory. The, the, uh, these fake cards, they have uh, uh, hacked firmware and this firmware will tell your PC or your camera there's 64 gigabytes of memory while in reality there's only 16 or 32 gigabytes of memory and it's also hacked uh, 
so that your camera normally when it saves a file this card will uh, give a return code like uh, yeah it worked or oh there was an error this hacked firmware just reports the camera yeah I've saved the file everything is okay uh, same with your when you put a card in your PC uh, your PC um, it's a fat file system on a card your PC uh, looks up in the file allocation table which clusters are assigned to this non-existent file this file allocation table itself is stored on existing memory at the start of the memory card and then it points towards clusters that do not exist but the memory card itself will just say okay I've just read those clusters but it hasn't because they're not there so this is something to be very careful with when uh, buying a memory card this is not something that will not happen to you it happens all the time I think five out of ten cases I get is due to uh, fake memory cards so that's uh, it um, if you have questions let me know put them in the comments or uh, email uh, you at disktuna.com or go do, to disktuna.com uh, click the support tab and there is a contact form uh, let me know what you run into what is not clear and then I can uh, address that in another video I would be uh, very grateful for that because the only thing I can learn uh, what I can do better or what's unclear or is by getting feedback from uh, from you I mean I created this tool initially for my own use and then I made something out of it that I think is usable for other people too but I'm 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 in this tunnel it's clear to me and 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 it, and it makes sense because I made it so I know what it's doing and but um, I want it to be clear for other people as well and the only thing I can learn if it's clear or not and what is clear and what is not clear is by people uh, telling me uh, well thank you for watching <laughs>